Welcome to the first video of section number four. In this video, we will cover everything you need to know to effectively unit test electron applications. The main focus of this video is going to be Electron Mocha. Electron applications are just JavaScript. However, keep in mind that our application code will probably interact with Electron-specific APIs, like the clipboard, which don't exist in non-Electron applications. The traditional solution to test Electron applications was to either make a clear distinction between what is Electron code and what is generic JavaScript code, so we could test the latter, or make use of complex frameworks that are able to stop required calls and provide mock implementations of the actual Electron modules, which is very cumbersome. As a solution, the Electron Mocha library allows us to write tests using the popular Mocha framework and run them in Electron itself. Now, this is a big deal. It means that we can run the tests in the platform where the final code will actually execute and that we have access to the Electron APIs for real from within our test cases. The Electron Mocha module will execute a fully functional hidden Electron application running Mocha and will bridge back the Mocha output to our terminal emulator. This slide will provide a crash course on the Mocha framework. We will only cover the very, very basics here, so I strongly advise you to visit the documentation at mochajs.org if you're not familiar with the framework. So Mocha provides you with a lot of utility functions to write unit tests. We can use the describe clauses to hierarchically organize the unit tests. In this example, the first describe clause describes a fictitious random generator object that contains two functions, generate sync and generate, which are addressed by their own describe clauses. The eat clause is the one that defines an actual test. The generate sync function is supposed to generate a random number, so the first test will check if the result is actually a number. The first argument to the eat function is a description of the test case, and the second argument is its corresponding implementation. Note that Mocha doesn't enforce any assertion library, and you're free to use one of your choice. During this video, we're going to use the assert library that is part of the Node.js platform. The second eat clause tests the same functionality, that is, that the generate function result is a number. However, it tests the asynchronous generate function instead. When testing asynchronous functions, the test case implementation function takes a done function that should be called if there is an error or when the test implementation has finished performing its job. Now that we know the basics of the Mocha framework, let's start exploring the Electron Mocha module. We can install this module by running npm install hyphen hyphen save hyphen dev Electron Mocha. The save dev option will add this module as a development dependency in our package.json file. Since Electron Mocha runs Mocha tests on Electron itself, it needs to access the actual Electron binary. The module will check for a globally installed Electron, but will also check if Electron has been installed as a development dependency. We will take advantage of that and also install Electron itself as a development dependency by running npm install hyphen hyphen save hyphen dev electron. If we now inspect our package.json file, we will see that both electron and electron mocha are listed as development dependencies. Now that we have everything set up, let's learn how to use the electron mocha test runner CLI tool and play around with some real examples. The electron mocha CLI has all the options from the Mocha CLI with some extra additions that we will cover here. One of the amazing features from this module is that it allows us to choose whether we want to run our tests in the main process or in the renderer process. The Electron Mocha Test Runner, as well as the original Mocha Test Runner, takes a reporter option that specifies how Mocha should display the test results. Mocha supports various reporters out of the box but we will use the spec reporter, which is the one I like the most. So we will pass the hyphen hyphen reporter option set to a spec. The next argument that the test runner CLI tool expects is the paths to the actual test files. Here we will assume we have a tests directory containing tests files that end with .spec.js. Notice that we can pass a hyphen hyphen renderer option to make the tests run in the renderer process. 
Omitting this option causes the tests to be run on the main process instead. Here we have a Mocha test file that makes use of the clipboard electron module. The test case writes some text to the clipboard and then checks that it has been stored correctly. As you might remember, the clipboard module is available to both the main and the renderer process, but we will use it here as an example of the renderer process. Let's add an npm script to our package.json to test this file using Electron Mocha. Our npm script will be called test-renderer and we'll call Electron Mocha with the options we've seen before, the renderer boolean option and the spec reporter. If we now run our npm script, we will see that our test succeeded. Let's introduce a small mistake on purpose, just to double check. I'll remove the exclamation sign in the test case assertion. Let's run the test again, and there we go. Now check out this small Mocha test file that tests that browser window instances are not in full screen mode by default. The browser window class is only accessible from the main process, so we have to make sure we don't pass the render option to Electron Mocha. We will add another npm script called test-main, which will include all the options from test-render, except the render boolean option. Now we can run this test, and great, all green. In this video, we learned how to unit test our Electron applications using the Mocha framework. Our tests will run in real Electron instances, so we don't have to worry about stabbing Electron-specific modules. Of course, unit testing is only part of the story. 